Good morning. Uh, my name is Derek. If I've never met you, uh, glad you're here hanging out with us today. Um, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up to uh, 1 John chapter 1. Um, it's where we're going to be uh, camping out today. Um, you know, I love, I love that scene. There's a, uh, you know, Jean Valjean shows up and, and he says, you know, this is, this is who I am. I'm a convict. Uh, and uh, he presents his, presents his uh, paper, you know, his yellow passport that says, look, this is all the bad stuff I've done. This is who I am. Uh, can I have some food? And immediately he's invited in to this house. And man, just the amazing, gracious generosity of, of these people to feed him and invite him in. And, uh, and he's sitting at the meal and cracking jokes about who he is and about what his identity really is. And then he finally gets to this point of, you know, where he's thankful and he's grateful. He says, you know, thank you, you know, tonight I'm going to have a good meal and I'm going to get a rest and a good bed, a real bed. And in the morning, I'll be a new man. And the sad thing is, morning never came. And Jean Valjean goes and he sees the opportunity to find his way back into his old way of life and steals silver from this man who's been so generous and so kind. And he smacks the man who's been so generous and so kind in the face and leaves him there on the floor and takes off running into the darkness. And so with that, let's dive into 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says, This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us of all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. So as we dive further into understanding the Savior's heart, uh, John's uh, uh, epistle is really, really powerful and meaningful uh, for us to understand what it means to be truly a Christian. Uh, that to be a Christian is this idea of, of understanding that we needed a light to show up and a light to come because we were living in darkness or had lived in darkness and we ourselves could not be that light, right? I mean, he says, like, if you think that you haven't sinned, you're, you're deceiving yourself and you're making a liar out of God. So he's saying, he's saying, not only do you need a light, but you can't become that light for yourself. You can't illuminate the darkness in and of yourself. And so you needed one to come, and that is Jesus Christ. And by his blood, he brings you out of darkness and into light. And as he brings you out of darkness into light, you're united with God, but you're also united with the, the family of believers. And, uh, and that's, that's no particular race or nation or tongue, but that's all those who proclaim Jesus as Lord have now become a part of the same family. It's such a beautiful power of the gospel. And, and, he, and he then says, he then says, I've told you all of these things so that you won't sin. 
Now, I think that's a really fascinating idea that John would bring up the the thought of like, here I am showing you and proclaiming the gospel to you, and I'm telling you this, and I'm reminding you of this so that you won't sin. He, he's like, I want, I want the grace of Jesus and I want the fact that he's called you out of darkness and into light to, to draw you to a place where you begin to live life in a different way. And you don't just keep walking back into darkness. You don't just keep walking back into sin. But you, you truly begin to live a new life because that's what you've been given. But he says this fascinating thing right after that where he says, he says, but if you do sin, if you s- take a step back into the darkness, you have an advocate. You have an advocate in Christ, Jesus, the righteous one. That's a really fascinating idea, isn't it? We have an advocate in Jesus even when we stumble and fall, even when we want to walk or start to take steps back into the darkness, we still have an advocate. It's not like he advocates for us once, but it's he advocates for us constantly, over and over and over again. He called us out of darkness and into light, and he keeps calling us. When we stumble back into darkness, he calls us back again. He says, get out of the darkness, come on. Come on. Stop going back that way. Come on, let's go this way. Again and again and again. It never fails. He's always there to advocate and call us back out of the darkness. This word advocate that we find here in 1 John is only used five other times in the New Testament. Uh, It's the word parakletos uh, in the Greek. And... um, And the only other times that we see it is actually in what's considered the upper room discourse, which is uh, at the end of John's gospel. So John's the only one in the New Testament who uses this word. But he uses it, it seems like, because it's the word Jesus used when talking about the Holy Spirit. At the end, when Jesus is getting ready to go to be crucified, he says, I am going to send you the advocate. And he uses this word, parakletos. And he says, this this parakletos is going to do some things for you that I can't do. It's actually better that the parakletos come and and me leave. And the disciples are like, you're crazy, Jesus, you know? He's like, they don't don't get it. But but this this is what Jesus is referring to when he's referring to the Holy Spirit. It reminds me of what Paul talks about when he talks about the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter uh, 2 Paul is talking, and the whole book of Ephesians is really about Christian identity. It's about understanding our identity as Christians and uh, that, that, that we are all one family. We're neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free, but we are, we are sons and daughters of God. That's the whole real idea and point behind uh, the book of Ephesians is to remind the Ephesian church of that truth. And, and he's saying, and the reason that you know The reason that you know that you're a son and daughter is because he has signed, sealed, and delivered you by the Holy Spirit. That's the way the message paraphrases it, that you've been signed, sealed, delivered. They just steal that from Tina Turner or something, I guess. Uh, But, but like, the, the... the idea being that, like, he's, he's bought you, he's paid for you, and he's got you covered. It's a really, really awesome uh, truth to behold, that if we are in Christ, we have this Holy Spirit, and it is this stamp of his love, and it is a stamp of his approval that he says, you're mine. You're my son you're my daughter. That's what the advocate does. The advocate comes alongside of you no matter where you are and says, I got you. I got you. No one, no arguments that anyone wants to form against you will prosper because I am for you and if I am for you, no one can be against you. That's what the advocate does. But this word, uh, parakletos, is really hard to translate into English 
uh, they don't have a great English translation for this word. It's translated many different ways uh, in, in different uh, translations of the scripture. Uh, and so advocate is the way that it was translated from Greek into Latin. And so that's the one that we typically get when we look at the NIV or the New King James and the New Living Translation. But then there are all these other translations of, of the New Testament, and they translate this word parakletos differently. They translate, actually, they use uh, multiple times, there are multiple translations that use uh, these other four names, not just advocate, to describe uh, parakletos, and they call uh, it a counselor. Maybe you've heard the Holy Spirit referred to as that, right? As a counselor. And a lot of times we think about the idea that this counselor is like our therapist, right? That's how we think of this term. That like we go lay on Jesus' couch and he helps us with all of our problems. Like that's, that's the way we look at it. But, but the term is actually, it's a legal term. It's, it's more of like a, a defense attorney counselor who stands up whenever we're before the judge and we're there guilty because they got us caught red-handed on tape, right? I mean, we are sinners. We can't deny that. And the counselor stands up and says, you know what? I've already taken care of it. I've already paid the price for their sin. I've already paid the price for the penalty or for the crime or for the wrong in which they committed. I've already paid the price. That's what the counselor does. He stands up before the judge and says, I took care of it. No need to condemn. No need to send him away. No need to put her in prison. I have it covered. But it also gets translated as helper. Helper. I love this translation as well. Like, I I think it's great. um, Because Jesus says, when I leave, I'm going to send you my helper. And he's going to lead you into all truth, meaning he's going to help us understand what truth really is, that the Holy Spirit's going to guide us to walk in that truth. And when we get away from the truth, he's going to remind us of truth again. He's our help when we are struggling to make understand and, and realize what is true and what is not true, what is what is a false accusation and, and what does is, what is God really say about us, about who we are and, uh, and where we find ourselves? It's, it's the place where we find wisdom is in this help of the Holy Spirit. He leads us to find this. But there's also the translation of it that says companion. He says in the Upper Room Discourse to his disciples, he said, there's going to be a time when uh, I leave, and when I leave, it's not going to go well for you, because the world that I am leaving you in does not recognize me. They also will not recognize you, because I am in you, and you are in me, and so what they don't recognize in me, they won't recognize in you, and because they have persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. And this happens, doesn't it, to all the disciples. They go through and they, they stick with the name of Jesus. And they proclaim the hope of Jesus and they, they build the church and yet many of them die on crosses just like Jesus. They are going to be persecuted. But he says, but it's okay because I'll be your companion. I'll be your parakletos. I know what it's like to go, what you're, go, go through what you're going through. I know what it's like to feel what you're feeling. I know what it's like to experience what you're experiencing. I know the pain. I know the suffering. I know the struggle. I know the difficulty. I am a good companion is what he's saying. And we have a good companion in Christ. Hebrews says that we have a high priest that empathizes with us because he has gone through everything we've gone through. He knows all that we have done and all that we've experienced. He's been tempted in every way we've been tempted and yet remain free from sin. And that's what makes him a better high priest is because not only does he understand what it's like to be human, but but he also understands how to push back temptation and sin 
And he can stand perfectly in that space as our companion and say, I know what it's like, but you're okay. And then there's also the, the word comforter. This word is given uh, to the disciples, parakletos, comforter. It's the idea that uh, he says, you know, in this world, you're going to have trouble. John chapter 16. In this world, I'm, you're going to have trouble, but fear not, for I've overcome the world. He's saying, like, I'm, this, I'm this comfort in the midst of fear. Anyone, anyone in here ever feel afraid? Yeah? Yeah, I feel afraid so much. If, I, if I'm just being honest, there's so many things that I'm afraid of. I, and, and I live in fear a lot of times. I make decisions in fear, right? What I choose to do or not do a lot of times is dictated by the fear that I feel in my heart and in my soul. The way I spend money is oftentimes is a product of fear. The way I cling to money sometimes is a product of fear. Fear is just everywhere because in this life you will have trouble. But in this life, if you are in Christ and you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, you have a comforter who comes to you in the midst of the fear and says, hey, I got you. You're protected. It's okay. Psalm 91 says, blessed is the one who finds shelter in the Most High, who rests in the shadow of his wings. And that's who we have. We have a comforter. We can rest in the shadow of his wings because he's our parakletos. He's our advocate. He is the one who comes to us, stands up for us when we are guilty. He is our counselor who pleads our defense, not based off of our doing, but based off of his. He is our help that leads us and guides us into truth. He is our companion who knows and has experienced all that we are going through. And he is our comfort in the midst of fear. Such a beautiful word that you can translate in all of these different forms, isn't it? And that's who we have in Christ. You know, we started uh, just a few moments ago watching a clip from Les Mis. And, uh, and I, just, I just love this clip, but the clip isn't over, and I want to show uh, kind of how this clip resolves itself and what happens uh, here with Jean Valjean uh, once he's kind of wandered away from the bishop's house. So we'll use wooden spoons. I don't want to.
what it means for Jesus to be our parakletos. That he steps in when we are caught red-handed as the morning rises and we've wandered into the darkness once again. And he, he steps up and he ransoms us from fear and hatred. He ransoms us from our sin and from our shame. And he pulls the veil off of our head and says, brother and sister, don't forget, you promised to become a new creation. Don't forget, I've ransomed you, and you no longer belong to evil. You no longer belong to the darkness, but you've been called out by grace and by mercy. I just hope and I pray that you and I, when we look upon the gospel, we see and put ourselves in this place where we know, man, I've been in darkness and I could not be the light, but Jesus came and called me out of darkness and into marvelous light that I might be a new creation in him. And I might leave this, live this day forward from this moment on, not as a convict, not as what the world wants to identify me as, not as a failure, but as a son, as a brother, as a sister, as a friend. And so this morning, my hope and my prayer is that you will embrace this identity you've been given and realize that, you know what, if you take a step back into darkness, you have an advocate, and he's always going to stand up for you. And what he pays on your behalf will always be sufficient to take care of your sin. And so now live this day and the next and the next as a new creation in Christ. Let's pray. God, we thank you for just the chance and the opportunity and the the ability to be before you and, and know that it's because you have been our advocate that we can approach your throne of grace with confidence. And we can lay down our crowns at your feet. And we can, we can just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our life and, and be grateful that we have been ransomed and redeemed. And so God, I pray that we don't look back and just think of ourselves as sinners as broken, wretched. But I pray that we see that, no, 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 no. No, you, by your blood, restored our true identity as your sons. And you desire to use us and work with us and see us bring your kingdom here. We are flawed and we are imperfect. But God, the truest thing about us if we are in you and we are in Christ, is that you love us and that you save us and that you've given us a new identity. And so may we live in it and walk in it in such a way that maybe we might call others along the way to live in it and walk in it with us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. It is new and fresh today. In Jesus' name, amen.